Welcome back to Introduction to Computer Science. My name is Alex Louis. One of my favorite areas in computer science and teaching this course is going through the fundamentals of data representation. What I'm going to go over is how computers represent data and we're going to go into logic gates. And it's hard to believe now that these logic gates actually perform mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But before we even go into that, I have to talk about how the logic gates work and how they make up a circuit. As you know, computers can only read binary information. For us humans, we represent numbers in base 10. So we go from 0 to 9. Even letters of the alphabet, we represent the information using ASCII characters. And even sign magnitude, we use a negative and positive sign. This is how we represent data as humans. The computer actually represents the information differently. And this is what I was mentioning before, where the computer can only understand binary. For example, if you're talking about a negative number, negative 25, on a binary representation, it could be denoted by the binary number starting with a 1, which it makes the binary, makes the number positive, or the number starting with a 0, which makes the number, I'm sorry, the number starting with a 1 will make the binary number negative. A binary number starting with a 0 will denote to the computer that it is positive. And again, we will go into this in more detail in the coming weeks. So this is an example. The external representation is how we see the ASCII character A. Once you type in the letter A, there's going to be a very, very complicated process where the letter A will be converted into an ASCII representation with binary strings representing 0 and 1. Once the computer can process that keystroke, then it can output the actual representation of that letter A. So I'll give you an example. If you type in an A on your keyboard, it doesn't mean that the computer understands what you're trying to say. What happens is the letter A is a signal that is sent to the CPU and says, hey, this byte string, which is 001001, needs to be converted into an ASCII character so it can show up on, your mo on the user's monitor. So what the CPU will do is it will go and look up the ASCII code for that signal that was sent on the keyboard. Once it finds that it's an alpha character, an ASCII character A, it will display it on the monitor. And that's the way that you will see it on the screen. So there is a process behind just you hitting keys, different keys on your keyboard. Everything that happens, as I explained earlier, is that your computer runs through the fetch decode execution cycle. Every program is executed as machine instructions. And as I highlighted in red, the computer only understands binary, which is 0101, whatever string of characters. And if there needs to be a lookup for a ASCII representation, the computer will do that. There is something known as an ASCII chart which every, by, every key on your keyboard will translate to, and you can look that up. Now, the ASCII chart representation of a key of a character on the keyboard is different than an actual binary number and binary number computations. We will go over this in the coming weeks. Just a little more review. A binary number represents a two-digit uh, I'm sorry, it uses two digits, 0 and 1, and it's a two-positional number system. What we're going to learn is how to convert a binary number into a decimal, and, and, so, and back and forth. 
We will also learn how to convert a binary number to a hexadecimal number and from a hexadecimal number to a binary number. <clears throat> so we have to be familiar with bases uh, of base 10, base 16, and base 2. Once you learn how to do this, then you can pretty much compute anything in any base. So you can do stuff in base 3, and base 4, and base 5. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you learned something in this lecture. Thanks.